Welcome back everyone. My name is Nancy and today I'm excited to begin building these honeycomb shelves. Here's a quick overview for what I'm about to build. These honeycomb shelves are made up of six identical pieces with the joining edges cut at a 60 degree angle so that they come together to form a hexagon. On the back side, I will cut out a channel which will hold a mirror and a plywood backer. I plan on making several of these in different lengths and depths and hang them on the wall to create a collage. For this project, I purchased white oak boards from my local hardwood supplier. I chose 5 quarter inch thickness for the wood instead of 4 quarter or 3 quarter because I wanted the edges to look thicker and less flimsy. As you can see, there are all kinds of imperfections with the wood that I brought home from the store. There are tear outs, burn marks, low spots, and cracks. My first instinct is to run these boards through my planer to get rid of some of these imperfections. As I begin to plane, I realize that it's actually very hard for me to plane these long and heavy boards. Sometimes the planer stalls or I get random deep cuts in the middle, so I have to figure out a different plan. I decide I have to cut each of these boards once, maybe twice, to lighten the load. Depending on how long I want the hexagon sides to be, I choose where I will make my cuts, accounting for additional planar snipe that would occur on the ends of each shortened board. I cut each of the boards to a more manageable size before sending them through the planer again. I really love my new planer cart. If you get a chance, please check out my other video on how I built that cart. The wood is now passing through the planer more easily, and I make sure to plane each side, keeping all the thicknesses consistent. My planer is hooked up to a shop vac that handles most of the wood chips, but I still get chips that sit on the planer bed or come flying out the front. I'm a little bit worried about having those chips there, so I keep a leaf blower on hand and blast the chips periodically when I need to. After planing, I decide to sand the front and back faces of the boards, first with 80 grit sandpaper and then again with 120 grit sandpaper. I usually skip this step because I'm in a hurry to get onto the next step, but I know it's much easier to do the bulk of the sanding now while the stock is long and flat, rather than later when I'm dealing with little pieces or an assembly with inside corners. Here, I am taking a moment to match up which pieces originally belong together because I'm planning to make each shelf from the same piece of wood. Ideally, I would like to keep the grain pattern consistent and make it look like one piece of wood wrapped into a hexagonal shape. But I know it'll be difficult because I'm losing a few inches in the middle due to planar snipe. Now, I have to rip the boards to width. They could be four inches or five inches, maybe five and a half, it really depends on how much width I have to work with and what I think would look nice. These boards that I bought come with one edge that is supposed to be straight and one edge that is hardly ever straight. I have to make sure to reference the straight edge when I'm measuring and cutting along a fence. I decided to make the shelves a variety of depths and sizes because I think it looks more interesting and also because I know that if I'm off by a little bit it won't be as noticeable. All of the cuts turned out fine, except for one board in particular, which ended up being a little bit curvy. Perhaps the edge that I was referencing wasn't quite straight, so I clamped it in a vise and planed it flat with my hand plane, checking periodically with a straight edge. This is my first hand plane, and I got it recently on Craigslist. I took it home, cleaned off the rust, Sharpen the blade, and it works pretty well. I use it all the time. I'm kind of addicted to hand planes now and can't wait to fill out my collection. I've been into power tools for a long time. Only recently have I become interested in hand tools and I'm steadily building them into my repertoire. This plane allows me to really dial in on getting the perfect shape. After a good number of passes, the board is finally flat. I'm going to cut out the groove in the back of the shelf with my router and this up spiral bit that goes about halfway up the thickness of the board. In retrospect, I wish I'd only gone up about 40% or less of the thickness to leave more room for the hanger bracket holes that I'll drill later. With the router seated in the table, 
and the fence in place. I plan on cutting the groove in two passes, cutting half of the width each time. As I begin making the first pass, I find that it's difficult to push the board through, so I need to adjust the fence to make a shallower cut. Now the cut is easier to make, and I make the first cuts on all my boards. Ultimately, I want to make the groove at least a quarter inch deep because I need enough space for an eighth inch thick mirror and an eighth inch thick sheet of plywood. This router table was one of my first shop projects. It has served me well so far, but I'm ready to make a new one, perhaps with a better system for collecting all the wood chips and dust. The first cut ended up being very shallow, so I compensated for that by making the second cut much wider. But the second cut was very hard to push through. That's probably when I should have stopped and decided to make three passes instead of two. But I was being stubborn and instead muscled my way through the rest of these cuts. It was awkward and a little dangerous, but the results were still pretty good. I was tired from all the routing, so I took a minute to test out a few finishes that I had on hand on a piece of scrap oak. From right to left, I tried teak oil, satin spar urethane, Danish oil in medium walnut, and a wipe-on polyurethane. I really liked how the teak oil turned out, so I'm going to go with that. It's late in the afternoon, and I have just enough time today to cut and assemble one of the shelves. So I pick out the boards I want to use and mark out where I want to begin cutting, taking note of where the planar snipe has occurred and avoiding those areas. I have a couple ideas for how I'm going to get my miter saw at a perfect 60 degree angle, or 30 degrees depending on how you look at it. I put a magnetic angle gauge on the table, zero it out, and then stick it onto the blade and hope that it reads close to 90 degrees. Then I tilt the saw until it reads 60 degrees. This is my first time using this gauge and I find it tricky because the number changes depending on how I stick the magnet onto the blade and I don't know if I did it right. The dial on the back reads 30 degrees, but that's not very precise. My second idea is to make a wide cut on a piece of wood, which you can see I've done a couple times already on the other end. I then draw a right triangle to see if the long side, or the hypotenuse, is exactly twice the length of the short side, which it should be on a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. Now I have to cut out these six pieces with an angle on both ends. For me, cutting an angle on a miter saw is kind of awkward. It's easy when I have a long piece that I can hold with my left hand and cut with my right hand. But sometimes I get these short pieces that I have to hold or clamp on the other side of the blade while I operate the miter saw with my right hand. I tried all different kinds of clamping mechanisms and each had its flaws. For angled cuts especially, you want to make sure that the piece is perfectly steady and not lifted off the table or out of place. It's quite an unforgiving cut. But luckily, I only had to make six of these pieces today, so I survived. I'm almost ready to assemble my first shelf, but before I do, I want to test out an idea that I have. I want to pre-finish the exposed faces with a layer of teak oil. My hope is that after I glue up the assembly, any glue that squeezes out won't soak into the wood, but rather sit on top of the oil and I can easily wipe it off. I've had trouble in the past where the glue will squeeze out and stay in the wood, no matter how hard I try to get it out, and end up repelling the stain or finish that I try to put on it later on. To pull the pieces together, I'm going to use ratchet straps. I got these pretty cheap. I got a set of four for $15. They're not the most intuitive to use, but they're fine. As I'm tightening the straps, the hexagon shape is coming together quite nicely. I'm surprised how well the shape is holding up. It's very sturdy. I was afraid it would feel more like a flimsy parallelogram and flop over like a sad cardboard box. I measure across the shape from corner to corner to see if the diagonals are the same length. And if not, I give it a nudge. And before it's too late, I wipe the glue squeeze out with wet paper towels. 
This is the end of the first day, and I can't wait to see how it all turns out tomorrow when I remove the straps.